Today's going to be a great episode. We're talking crypto with some of your favorite guests, and today is no exception. We're going to start up here in that top right corner with Jason Casper, and we're going to have to, I'm going to start a petition to get those YouTube shorts back on, and we got to get those things rolling, man. Also, we have Altcoin Daily, him and his brother, they're, they're wonderful people, but not only that, they inter they discuss Mr. Wonderful in their second to last video, so you're definitely going to want to check that out. Also, we have Mind Your Biz. Uh, he's a Monero fan extraordinaire, but he just recently became a book reviewer. So if you got some uh, Bitcoin books or something, make sure you mail him your copies. He's going to want to check those out. He's a book reviewer now. That's what he does. And, of course, we have Ben, but like E.T., he's a home phone extraordinaire. But I'm talking about those phone records, man. You've been uh, killing it with those things. But, yeah, we're going to talk about Binance, buying the dip. We got Peter Schiff with another doomsday prediction. Is that the bottom signal we're looking for? And we have stock market dividends. It's a little wordplay right there. What does he mean? Did he mean Bitcoin dividends? I don't know. We're going to discuss that in the last topic. But let's, uh, you know what time it is, right? It's time to roll up that footage of that black and white plane going around the globe there. That's right. It is market watch time. And it feels a little bit better, but the charts don't seem to reflect that. I do know the fear isn't as high as it was yesterday, despite what we are seeing here. We have Bitcoin at 43,000. We have Ethereum at 3,400. Bitcoin down about 1%, almost 2%. Uh, Ethereum down, you know, 4%. Binance coin down about 1.5%. Solana looking a little bit scary, but uh, Polkadot, it, it does start to slow down as we get further down. Now, Jason, you're, you're our TA guy, you know, and uh, we're joking about... Uh, your your shorts, I guess you could say earlier before we went live, but is this the place where, you know, are the shorts about to get wrecked? Are some longs gonna get wrecked? What what's the charts looking like for you? Yeah, I mean, honestly, we're we're at good support right now. And I don't think we're gonna see too, too much lower. I mean, honestly, I'm not expecting to go below 39. And this might be the bottom. In some exchanges, we actually did put in some bullish divergences when we came down. I think on Binance actually. Speaking of Binance buying the dip, uh, the BTC USD pair on Binance put in a really nice bullish divergence on um, uh, on the four hour time frame. And you know what this reminds me of? It kind of reminds me of in the summer when everybody was getting super super bearish as we were grinding down around 30k and people were calling for lower. People were calling for 27. People were calling for 23. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere we just started to shoot up. So. Is it going to be as extreme as we saw in the summer? I, I'm not too sure, but I think people are freaking out. People are getting super, super bearish. And usually um, the market will do the opposite of what everybody is kind of um, expecting. And right now the sentiment is extremely bearish. So I think this could be a, a, a bottom, right? I'm not saying it is, but it very well could be. All right. Very well could be. I mean, you know, we are going to keep an eye out on that. But like, you know, Jason said, there, there could be some other levels and but we are seeing some uh, bullish divergence, so that is a good sign. And we covered that on our last episode, so if you want to see a little breakdown on that, make sure you go check that out. And again, just hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and also make sure you check out all the channels, all the guests that are here. They're all putting out really, really good content. But let's talk about some Binance buying the dip. Since we're talking about Bitcoin here, we're talking about a pretty big purchase. They bought that dip, and they bought it hard. Don't you hate it when that chip breaks? Uh, one address belonging to Binance this is how much they added, folks. Are you sitting down at home? Are you sitting down? Sit down. I'm going to give you a second. Okay, you're sitting down. They bought 43,000 Bitcoin at an average price of around 46,000. And this Binance wallet now has $5.5 billion in Bitcoin. Just this purchase was worth about $2 billion. Now, Ben, I'm going to bring it right to you. How can a purchase of this size not really move the needle are they buying in a way that is not making the price of the next bitcoin jump so they can get in cheaper why isn't it moving the needle here well they're not buying it on their own exchange <laughs> you know if they were yeah. if they were buying yeah. it on their own exchange you know they, they'd be pumping the price pretty good so uh, i mean most likely it's coming from um otc deals i, I would assume if they're buying that much um, I don't know what exchange they can go to or what place they can go to outside of over the counter and buy that much at one time. So, you know, if that's something we should really look into is is where does Michael Saylor actually buy his Bitcoin? Does anybody know the answer to that? Coinbase at he, one point. Yeah. Is, he is still the Coinbase, Coinbase OTC though, right? It was the OTC desk and then they spread it out, yeah. I believe. Yeah. 
So very interesting. So uh, thank you for that information. Um, but yeah, I, I think that really when it comes to this, th th they buy these off the books not to move the price. I mean, I, I think the reason why they bought this much is because, like, look, here's the fact. There's only one possible reason why they bought that much right now. They think it's going to go up, right? Now, if they think it's going to go down, why would they not wait? So this, and obviously this is not a play for them to make money on holding Bitcoin, this is for them to add Bitcoin and liquidity to, you know, across their, their platform so that people can trade. So I'd expect they're probably expecting, you know, some big movement from Bitcoin here pretty soon, kind of similar to what we see when Tether, you know, prints all their uh, Tether grants. Traditionally, up until the last couple of times, when Tether prints more Tether grants um, or basically creates more token to add to the supply, that used to be a big sign Bitcoin was about to move. Uh, this is kind of the opposite. We're seeing big Bitcoin moves. I think this is a good sign that, uh, you know, trading is uh, going to come back. All right. And uh, I wrote, I wanted to address real quick. I'm reading the chat, Twitch chat. If the basement dwellers, if you're watching, uh, show the YouTube people like why we like the basement chat. Uh, we are shut down on Twitch at the moment. Hopefully we'll get that restored. But in the meantime, basement, hang out in the YouTube. You know, don't worry. Don't, don't. It's not as dark and gloomy and damp as you like, but, you know, they are going to be welcoming. Now, we'll come ben, back. You, we'll come back. <laughs> Yeah, come back. We'll, we'll come back. All right, Alco, you, you know, you brought up Coinbase. I, I kind of want to bring this up. So Binance, they haven't sold a single Satoshi out of this wallet. They've never sold a fraction of a Bitcoin. Are they taking... So with a Coinbase, though, they don't really custody much Bitcoin. You would think Coinbase would be, you know, one of the biggest holders of Bitcoin, but they barely have any crypto on their balance sheets. Is Binance a long-term hodler of Bitcoin, unlike Coinbase, do you think? Or is this you know, a strategic move and maybe they'll dump in a year or four. Well, first off, great to be here, guys. Great to be on, on Around the Blockchain with you. Great energy this episode. DZ, I'm talking to you. To answer your question, you. You. Uh, I would say pay attention to what smart money does, not what smart money says. For example, it's one thing for CZ to tweet out, buy the dip or still bullish. That's just words. But the fact is, that the Binance Exchange wallet bought so much Bitcoin. And we only know that that wallet is associated with Binance and acts as a reserve sort of for their holdings because they doxed themselves three years ago in 2019. That's the only reason we realized that. That says something. And I'm not saying that it's close to a bottom. I'm not saying that this is a bottom, but in my mind, when smart money and Binance is smart money makes a purchase of this size like this, I would say we're a lot closer to a local bottom than to a top heading into a bear market is what that says to me. Add that on to all, all the on-chain metrics, for example, uh, NVT ratio, which is Willy Woo's uh, thing, that uh, metric that takes the amount of value being transacted on-chain, not exchanges, but on-chain, and puts it in comparison to the value of the chain, meaning the market cap, and just shows historically that just flashed a buy signal. On top of that, Bitcoin on exchanges, all exchanges are near, I believe, a three-month low hash rate near an all-time high, number of nodes at an all-time high. When you put all that together, and then you see Smart Money just bought a, I put in a buy order, bought, not a buy order, they bought Bitcoin of this size. To me, that's as closer to a bottom if we have not bottomed already. Yeah, and not only that, it was a little bit higher. So we're even closer if that is the case. Now, mine, we, we can't talk about hash without talking to you, mine. So, you know, he brought up uh, Altcoin Daily. They bring up some of these on-chain metrics. There's also, you know, some hash metrics and some mining specific metrics. Are you kind of seeing the same thing when it comes to these metrics? I know Kazakhstan had a little issue where maybe the hash rate dropped. Is any of that, you know, taking part of this price action? Yeah, it's absolutely, absolutely part of the picture uh, for sure. First off, Altcoin Daily, I want you to know that we got the energy going, just never the way you expect. I'm actually not wearing any pants today because we got that big dip energy. But ooh, ooh. just say it's one of those Party. days, it's one of those days. <laughs> Woo. It's one of those days. Big dip energy. All right. Moving. I mean, let's stay relevant. Guys, don't make it weird. So <laughs> it's too as late. far as there being any, I know, I right? Hashtag dad jokes all day, like the Energizer money. But we got this thing going on in Kazakhstan, which is quite impactful. Um, so shout out to the homegirl, Wendy O. I did a segment on her show where we covered this kind of in depth. Over 21% of the Bitcoin global net hash or the amount of hash rate that goes into it is represented in this one Central Asian country, Kazakhstan. We don't normally expect for that to be any way indicative of Bitcoin's price, but let's be very, very real. This is a proof of work network. It is the proof of work network. If you have a belief in Bitcoin, capital B, 
the asset, then you have a belief in Bitcoin lowercase b, the network, which equals proof of work. You believe in proof of work if you believe in Bitcoin. And you have to know that there's going to be knock on effects when we have any kind of sociopolitical issues, whether it's in you know a far flung nation that we don't see every day that doesn't affect us. But these poor people, what they're going through is going to have knock on effects in the network. So I don't know if I agree. Hash rate actually did dip measurably recently. Yes, we're close to that all time high. Absolutely. But it did pull back a little bit because of what's happening in Kazakhstan. And it's not this tiny little thing. It's 21%. We're almost yeah. a quarter down if this does wind up forcing miners to leave Kazakhstan. What could that mean for a potential sell-off? Normally, miners are accused of creating sell pressure with Bitcoin. That hasn't been the case over the last probably year or so, as there have been far better options for collateralized lending within the space. Smart miners and smart money, as Altcoin Daily said, have been making sure they have their cake and eat it too. Hold on to the Bitcoin, use it as collateral, get the cash you need, expand your operations. But in a situation like this, all bets are off. We don't know what the situation in a place like Kazakhstan will do to investors and to anybody who's even relatively local to the region. We don't know if they'll be forced to sell off some of their assets, including some of the mining gear, and then have to relocate. That kind of infrastructural change, we've never weathered anything quite like this before. China FUD in the past, and then more recently, having miners removed from China, it was still a very different thing. What's happening in Kazakhstan, it's, it, it does much more closely resemble a black swan event. It is a bit of an unknown unknown. So okay. I don't know, man. I'm not convinced. Well, we'll see. Well, uh, speaking of weathering a storm, let's uh, take it to our farmer here. It wasn't just Binance that's buying heavy amounts of Bitcoin. The world's third largest Bitcoin wallet also made a pretty big purchase. They, I mean, they've been, they too have around 5 billion. I think Coindesk pointed out that they started buying days ago. Just uh, this recent dip, they bought another 550 Bitcoin. So they're buying a lot of Bitcoin here. Now, Jason, there's a lot of choppy action. Do you think these giant whales, you know, do they know something that we don't know? Or when I say we, I mean, just the average investor. Is there just some indicators just out there just screaming by right now? And the whales are just saying, you know what? You know, like they said, this is close to a bottom, I think. Right. Well, I mean, definitely whales do know things that your average retail trader doesn't know. And definitely they're in communication with each other. And they have groups talk about when to buy, when to manipulate price. I absolutely know that that's true. But, um, you know, I would say that if, if we're just objectively looking at the price of Bitcoin right now at 40K, I mean, a few months ago, people were saying, oh, man, I, I would love 40K. I would love 40K. People were saying that, you know, I would buy so much Bitcoin at 40K. Well, here we are. <laughs> and yeah. uh, now, you know, people are like, eh, I don't know about this 40K thing. So, I mean, I don't know if there's an indicator that's saying to scream by, but if we're just uh, uh, somebody who's investing in Bitcoin, right, we're not traders, um, but we're just buying Bitcoin. You know, I've been dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin on spot since we lost 50K and I plan to continue to do so um, because we are buying it at a discount and Bitcoin is not going to go to zero. It's over time. We are going to see $100,000 Bitcoin. I'm, I'm completely confident in that. So I really don't see any reason why people who have a lot of money at their disposal to purchase an asset that is going to appreciate in value over time wouldn't be doing so as the price continues to come down. And when we see massive dips, like a 10% dip in a few days, um, you know, that's an amazing buying opportunity. And, and these are people that are looking at the big picture, right? They're not stuck. Sometimes I get stuck on the one minute time frame trying to scalp on the one second. But, uh, you know, when we take a step back, it's, it's a great time to be buying Bitcoin. Coin. Yeah. Corn. 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 Coin. Coin. You know what? It's, it's all these farmer references that, that I, I take blame for that. Yeah. And uh, he, to be fair, he looks at the 30 second chart, everybody. Uh, yeah. So definitely check out uh, Casper. He's one of my top three traders, him, Face, and Gareth Soloway are like my favorite three. Just so I'm not a trader, easy... though. I'm not a trader. I'm not betraying. Yeah, not, not Emmett trader. Till. Not, okay. But uh, right. all right. Moving on to the lightning round. That is right. It is lightning time. I think uh, he, he's probably going to throw in the chip reference here. But the lightning question for today is. Are you buying this dip or have you bought too many dips already? Jason, you kind of answered. Are you buying this dip? I'm licking it, man. I am licking the dip. And it All right. tastes he's, good, man. He's licking the bowl clean, the metaphorical bowl clean. Altcoin daily. Are you buying this dip or have you bought too many dips already? 
I personally dollar cost average, meaning I buy every single dip, meaning if Bitcoin dips lower, I'll continue to buy because I'm not blowing my you know, wad, as they say, all in one. But if we keep going down, another 10%, another 10%, as opposed to on our way up, that's when I like to sell. Buy on the way down, sell on the way up. Guys, I'm the one who's supposed to push the line and I, you know, I'm trying to reel it in here, but y'all are making it very difficult here. Mind your biz, have you, are you buying the dip? Have you bought too many dips already? You know, that's a great question. Actually, very similar to Altcoin Daily. I'm not a big believer in, uh, in, in big uh, purchases per se. I like value averaging though. That is kind of more a strategy. I try to keep some dry powder for when I see something that's a bit of a sale. And so this is where I'm turning on some more frequent buys, slightly more frequent buys within a range that I've specified that's comfortable for me. And I think we're about there. So this is kind of my value average buy range. Okay. And Ben, are you buying the dip or I would imagine you bought some dips before? Uh, COVID Hagen long cut. My favorite kind. Okay. Okay. I thought skull. I Sorry. No, yeah, skull. Um, no, I do not dip. Uh, but what I will say is uh, we're actually adding to our altcoin bags right now. We think that's probably a, a better play right now because they're, you know, always Bitcoin drops, altcoins drop more. Uh, you know, we're looking at uh, engine uh, specifically. Uh, we bought some osmosis and, uh, you know, we're looking at some other projects as well to add to our overall portfolio. Okay. And Link Marines watching at home, do not get mad at me. I didn't do my usual four chain link. But I did buy uh, 20 Uniswap, full disclosure. I bought 20 Uniswap last night. Uh, looks like it was on sale. I think it went down another 20, 30 cents. Not even worried about it. Uniswap is burning more Ethereum than every single protocol except for Ethereum itself. So it makes me bullish on that. But I, I, I feel comfortable. It's Uniswap. I mean, check it out. But let's talk about our favorite uh, gold bug, that is. That is Peter Shift, and he's predicting a $15,000 Bitcoin he claimed it's prime for a feverish plunge, his words, if it breaks through the critical support. He says if it fails to hold at 42, it's going to plummet all the way down to 30. And then if it doesn't fail or if it fails to hold 30, then it's going to plummet all the way down to $15,000 Bitcoin. That's right. He's saying we're going to see a $15,000 Bitcoin. Now, Peter, he's a he's somewhat of a perma Bitcoin bear, a perma bear for Bitcoin for sure. He's definitely a perma bull for gold. Uh, he lost a lot of money with his own gold fund this year. You know, it's been largely flat for 10 years. Uh, they're printing money, you know, just left and right. He's not seeing any of these gains. He's actually losing value. <sighs> Let's see. Allcoin Daily. I, I know you've done a video on him before. Uh, how should we treat this man's advice? Is it a bottom signal? Is this something, you know, maybe we try to get excerpts of what he's saying and take it to heart? Like, how, how do we treat this man's words? I would treat it as old man yells at new technology. <laughs> but really, I think Peter, Peter Schiff is a smart guy. I think that he, in, in a lot of his core beliefs in terms of what's happening with money, what's happening with government, uh, Bitcoiners and him can get along with, can uh, get on the same page with a lot of that. Difference is he believes gold is, is the solution. I'm a big Bitcoin guy, as you may have known. Peter Schiff once said, and this was years ago, that I think it was when Bitcoin was on its way to 20K the first time that the network is garbage and Bitcoin could go to 100K and would still not invalidate his point of view that he is not a believer. He thinks Bitcoin is garbage. There's a saying that the more you understand about Bitcoin directly correlates to the amount of Bitcoin you hodl. So it's just a change in, it's just a difference in perspective. And I would flip Peter Schiff's, Schiff's thoughts on Bitcoin and for, for me personally, I flip that and that it directly correlates to my thoughts on Bitcoin, which is Bitcoin could go to 15K and I would still be a long-term believer in the network. Bitcoin could drop to as low as 1K again. I don't think it ever will, but I would love to buy Bitcoin under 20K. And the reason I say that, it's not just blind faith. Oh, oh, I, this is a cult. I, I love Bitcoin so much. My God, Bitcoin. My God, thank you. It's not that. It's that the... Uh, the fundamental metrics as a whole of the network are only getting more distributed, are only growing stronger. I already listed a bunch of them, nodes, hash rate, the amount of value being uh, transacted on chain, all those things, again, not day to day, as mine your business, mine your biz said, hash rate did drop because of Kazakhstan. But as a whole, the network is getting stronger. And if price dips lower, which it absolutely can, anything is possible in cryptocurrency, Bitcoin could go to 15K. I don't know what the future holds, but I would be a buyer. And as long as that network is strong as a whole, 
I think that would be a huge buying opportunity. Okay, so it's not a cult. Does that mean the meeting's off next week? Okay, I'll have to change my flight here. All right, well, it is, you know, there are... <laughs> and coffee <laughs> there are smart people saying you know it can go down like it doesn't mean worry uh i'm thinking sam bankman freed he recently he was saying uh down today doesn't mean down tomorrow and i agree with that you know it, it could go much lower but you know long term i am bullish on this but mind your biz you know someone coming in you say look down today doesn't mean down tomorrow then they start buying and then next thing you know there's a, another giant red candle and they're looking at you like man and you're saying no that means you buy more they do it again. It's a falling knife. You know, is this sound advice to give uh, newcomers in the space? Wow. I feel like we kind of got you. You really like giving me moving targets here, DZ. You like moving the goalpost on me right before it's uh, my turn. On, always. On, on, yeah. On I'm like pulling it's, the, it's, and I know, love it. Charlie I love Brown football it. trick here. Yeah. Guys, obviously, if you aren't subscribed, please, please do. So you can see more of DZ taking the piss from from guests <laughs> daily. But uh no, I really appreciate that. Um, that that framing of the question, though, is it sound advice to just continue to buy the dip? No, I mean you've seen the meme, right? The the one from a, the person of interest, right? Where it's a person with a gun behind another person with a gun behind another person with a gun. Like I bought the dip. No, the dip. No, the dippy dip. No, the other dip. It can keep falling. We've definitely seen free fall. And trying to catch falling knives it usually only rewards you with a cut hand, right? So that way, the the blood that's in the market, so to speak, well, mixed metaphors here, the blood that's in the streets is then yours. Don't try to catch falling knives. That's that's very poor advice. Very, very poor advice indeed. But as far as what Peter Schiff is saying here, the the overall sentiment of what Peter Schiff is saying, I agree with Altcoin Daily, and he I, absolutely. Um, I if you saw me nodding very, very heavily, it absolutely could. The bare utility of Bitcoin right now. I'm going to jump back to what I said before. Fundamentals. We'll quote the book of Satoshi here. Proof of work is the feature. It's the main feature. It's what protects against double spending. It's what made Bitcoin such a unique cryptocurrency after so many others had attempted to use cryptography and failed. Right. The signatures that form those those hashes and then create these blocks. Right. That form these blocks, each one after the other. Yeah, it seems outmoded now, and there's some really cool proof of stake happening in a lot of other chains, but Bitcoin does that proof of work thing really darn well. Right now, proof of work can only account for about uh, on the average cost basis of power across all the United States, which right now is over 40% of the network. Thank you again, China, for making the biggest mistake of your life, kicking out miners. But the cost basis for power here in the United States would put the bare utility, right? The, the cost of production the very, very lowest at about 14.5. That's what it is today. Right now, Bitcoin's bare utility value, right? Just knowing that we have miners that don't pack it up, don't have to go home, keep the network secure and provide you the ability to transact permissionlessly with the hardest money ever invented. Miners do that and right now, if it just came down to the cost of them producing that domestically and in a few other key markets throughout the world, we're looking at about $14,500 Bitcoin. Schiff is actually not wrong. And I can't believe I'm saying that on your show, but he's actually not wrong with that being a potential doomsday scenario. Is it likely? No, I don't think so. Right. But even a broken clock is right twice a day. I think this is one of Schiff's better picks. All right. Well, uh, let's ask the TA guy here. Now, Jason, you know, Let's just assume worst thing in the world's happening. You know, it just keeps crashing. It keeps crashing. It keeps crashing. Let's say it, it fails to hold 30. During the summer, it, it just kept bouncing. Bounce off 29. Bounce off 28.5. Bounce off 28.200. And then, then we saw what happened later on, a $69,000 Bitcoin. If Bitcoin does fail to have $30,000 as support, could you see 15 in the cards? Is there anything, you know, besides the miners' value? Is there anything like in the Fibonacci, you know, extension saying that? Or is that just a little too low? Well, you know what I would really like to see? I would like to see Ben debate Peter Schiff. That'd be pretty cool. We should get that going. But I'd, I'd, um I'd watch. Yeah. We, I'd watch. We, well, we did it, and I don't I don't know whatever happened. They never released it. I don't know what happened. I crushed well, it. Yeah. I'm like very upset. Yeah. I need yeah, to follow why. up. We need to find out what happened with that. I'm going to fire off an email right now. Do it right now. Do it right now. Yeah, I mean, if if the fecal matter does come into contact with the revolving apparatus and we do see something drastic happen and Bitcoin starts to dump, first of all, honestly, I know Peter Schiff. He's a well-known guy in, in, in when it comes to gold and like other areas of the financial sector, but 
what he has to say about Bitcoin, in my humble opinion, is completely meaningless. It's 100% meaningless. How many false predictions has he made in the past? At this point, what he has to say is completely meaningless. doesn't mean a single thing. But even if we, like I said, the fecal matter and the contact and revolver and all that stuff, we do have some supports underneath 30 before we come back down to 15. And of course, 15K is a really good support. We do have good support there. It's really cool what Miner Biz said about Bitcoin being worth just based on the network running around that price. But there's definitely a lot of supports that we can come to before we hit 15K. Like 26K is a really strong Fibonacci level. And then underneath that, we got about 23K. And 20,000, that's going to be a huge support. I mean, that was the previous all-time high. And there's no way just losing 30 is going to plummet us all the way down to 15, not with some, some serious fighting at some of these levels that I believe will absolutely be defended. So, oh, man. Yeah, like I said, just totally meaningless stuff. I just, the news needs something to talk about, I guess, when somebody says something. Yeah, no, that was good. And uh, speaking of revolving apparatuses, I'm always a fan of uh, Jason's uh, wordplay there. But let's go to uh, stock market dividends. I, too, do want to see that uh, Schiff interview. I, I remember the energy after it. Man, I can't wait. But, yeah, we're talking stonks. That's right. If, if, you, if you're on the stonks or any of those Reddit things, Go ahead, smash that like button. Let us know. We got to get this out to as many people. We're over a thousand. I think we can hit two thousand, but we all got to band together and hit it right now. I'm doing my part, so go ahead, hit that like button, and make sure you subscribe to this channel and all the channels for the guests here, just in case you haven't. It's like the little button says right there on the bottom of the screen. But BTCS stock, they just announced a huge thing. This is a first. This is a first in the industry. Instead of a regular dividend, is where. That's where a stock will give out a portion of their profits to their shareholders. Instead of paying out a nickel in U.S. fiat, they're going to be paying out five cents worth of Bitcoin instead per share if you so choose to elect to take it that way. Uh, afterwards, their stock jumped about 44%. And, it, you know, the markets are down broadly today. It is down a little bit, but it jumped 44%. They announced it. They changed the name. No longer a dividend. It's called the Bividend. Uh, this is the first ever payable in uh, in history. You know, this is a NASDAQ listed company, too. We're not talking about some random exchange on a random country. This is a NASDAQ listed country or a company. All right, Ben, I know I know how you feel about stonks. So that's why I'm going to ask you, can this get people who are, you know, just mostly crypto natives? They don't really get excited by stocks. You know, as a instead of, you know, deleveraging your risk in Tether or a stable coin, can you see people getting excited like, you know what, let me maybe go to a slightly less volatile asset like a stock, but I still get a little crypto exposure. Will this excite anybody in the crypto space who doesn't have stocks already? Uh, no, this is not going to excite anybody in crypto. No, nobody, nobody in crypto is excited about this. What is it's BT, uh, SI or BT, what is the company? S, uh, BT, what is that company? S. I'm going to look it up right now. Let's see here. I, I did have it earlier. It's not in BTS. I, I think I know what it is, but I can't recall. It's like they don't have a name. They just keep calling themselves that. And that was one of the issues I saw. Blockchain firm. B, I think that is their name, but it's just a, a blockchain yeah. firm. They they offer uh, just services for customers. People who don't, people are scared of a wallet, I assume. Yeah. So I, I, I think that the what this can do is see, it's kind of like this Cash 22 if companies had stocks and they were offering these dividends uh, to, let, let's say, I'm going to throw something crazy out there. Like, let's say Apple did this, okay? So Apple paid out their dividends in Bitcoin. That would be super exciting. Let's say it's not even Apple. Let's say it's company much further down the list, okay? Like the number 412 stock. But they're paying out in Bitcoin their dividends. That would be much more exciting because if someone's investing in this blockchain firm, they already know about crypto. And so getting more Bitcoin for investing in a stock, like why would they not just go invest in Bitcoin? Uh, so I, I think if it was a, a company that wasn't crypto centric, this would be much more exciting. I honestly think this is, uh, you know, really just about marketing and, uh, you know, plugging themselves. I mean, because we weren't talking about this company yesterday. I agree. I think it's strictly a marketing play. It's not a value added for the investors play whatsoever. Now, Altcoin Daily, uh, what is the, you know, you kind of go over a lot of fundamentals for your viewers and, you know, your viewers do appreciate that. Make sure you go check you out do his watch. channel. I do watch. Believe it or not. I'm in your Twitter spaces. I'm watching, man. I'm watching these things. Cool, man. Uh, appreciate you. Appreciate it. Well, it's a good channel, you know. 
what is the difference between a stock dividend or a dividend and just regular, you know, crypto staking? Uh, you know, how, how do you how can you kind of separate those two things? Hmm. I guess I mean they would be very similar because you're getting your passive rewards in that coin or in crypto. So I mean I I would say they're pretty near close. In my opinion, this Bitcoin dividends, dividends, this is like what Fold and BlockFi offer only to the more traditional world. You have that Fold card, that BlockFi card. You can choose to go with a regular chase and maybe get 1.5, 2% back in cash. But for those people that are Bitcoin believers, have lower time preferences, or have a longer time horizon, they want to get their cash back, uh, their purchase back in Bitcoin because they're willing to hold. Over time, your cash is guaranteed to lose value. It's those Bitcoin believers that are betting, oh, this is the hardest money, every little bit counts. This is the same thing, in my opinion, for the traditional world, especially those people. There's so many people this year that just want to invest in the publicly traded Bitcoin mining companies or the blockchain tech companies, just because that's their little piece of exposure. This, as so many people have said, is that marketing play to get those people just a little bit extra um, as they're making their investments in the stock market. All right. Uh, real quick question for mine. Will we see a domino effect from this? And if yes, will we see a domino effect from co companies outside of the blockchain space like Ben mentioned? You know, we may potentially see this happen outside of the blockchain space. And I think that that would be a good thing in general for onboarding. Like Ben said, this isn't going to speak to your already savvy crypto investor. Like Altcoin Daily said, this may be just kind of a very much geared towards, you know, what we call plebs or we call it maybe, uh, maybe normies, which is that's very derogatory. Don't don't call your friends normies. You're going to scare them away from crypto forever. But that's going to be the onboarding mechanism for folks who really don't know any better. So I hope it does become a trend. Jumping back to the original article itself in the company, here's an interesting tidbit. They, as far as their infrastructure roadmap, one of the products that they offer, they offer Ethereum nodes, a Cardano pool, Tezos nodes, and an Avalanche pool. They're entirely invested in DeFi, and, and they're putting sell pressure on Bitcoin with their investors. This is hilarious, and it's next level. Um, so I'm just going to ask, please, anybody uh, who's on the panel right now, please do do a deeper dive. I would love to see your take on it because I'm sure you'll be able to find even dirtier stuff than that. But this is just on their homepage that they're talking about. This is the infrastructure product that they offer. So I don't know. It could, there could be more to it than just trying to get people onboarded into cryptocurrencies. Clearly, what they're selling by way of the actual products, not the dividends or this dividend that's being paid out, but the actual products themselves are meant to be blockchain infrastructure to serve all the other sides of DeFi, not Bitcoin proper. So maybe a little bit of ex uh, direct exposure to Bitcoin for people who hold this, but clearly a lot more indirect exposure to ETH, Cardano, Tezos, and Avalanche. I, I'm just I, I'm trying to make sense of, of what we're looking at right now. But uh, yeah, the head scratcher for sure. All right. Final question. I'm going to bring it to you, Jason. Uh, I, I always like to reference the farmer uh, aspect of, you know, of your life because no other guest. So I get to do this. So as a farmer, you know, sometimes you got animals, same species, but they'll have different temperaments. You might have one rooster who likes frozen corn. The other one might like frozen peas. The other one, you know, maybe they like to crack open a sunflower kernel. So with this, do you see? Do you think that this For company sure. is kind of they're trying to please two different people, right? They want to please the crypto person and they're trying to please the stock person. Is this a case of trying to please two audiences and you end up just serving each poorly, or is this you know there is a demand for this? Well, you know what? I don't know if there's necessarily a demand for this, but I agree with everyone else on the panel in the sense that what this is going to do is this is going to bring exposure to cryptocurrency in general because. You know, my grandfather and your grandfather and everyone's grandfather, we've been trying to get him into crypto. Hey, grandpa, you got into crypto. He's like, nah, son, I'm not getting into none of that Bitcoin stuff. I only trust in the integrity of the United States dollar, right? But he's into stocks. And so now he's going to see that they're paying out dividends in Bitcoin. He's be like, son, what was that website again? Cornbase.com? Cornbase? He's going to go there and then he's going to call you up the next day. He's going to be like, son, I went out to Cornbase.com. You ever heard of this thing called Ethereum? You ever heard of this thing called Cardano? I'm going to get me some of them because I saw Bitcoin went up to 70K and Ethereum's only 3,000, man. That could be the next Bitcoin. And so it's going to bring a lot of exposure to the people like my grandfather, you know, getting into crypto. 
who who never would have gotten into it before. But us people who are already in crypto, I mean, it's good for us because now my grandfather is going to be pumping our bags. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to whether or not they want to please the rooster or oh, my poor hen who got eaten by a falcon the other day, oh, I, I think it's a good move for them in general. You know, uh, I, I didn't mean to like give a point to the sad part right there. I wasn't like rewarding, uh, you know, the falcon uh, that may have came off the wrong way. But I had to give you a bunch of points for being in the space for this many years. And I've never heard Ethereum once in my life so uh kudos kudos to that jason and with that it looks like you snuck past mind your biz and altcoin daily right there at the end so jason casper uh you won go ahead leave us with some parting thoughts man parting thoughts wow well first of all thank you guys for having me on the show and uh yeah guys bitcoin definitely i'm dollar cost averaging in i do believe in the future of the asset and i think that um we have a really exciting road of he ahead of us in the crypto space. So God bless y'all. Really exciting road ahead of us. Uh, it's going to happen fast and it's going to happen in a very powerful way. And we are all here for it. And I, for one, am excited as well. So if that is all we got time for. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you check out all these channels. And until next time, Bit Squad, peace out. Also, we have Mind Your Biz. Uh, he's a Monero fan extraordinaire, but he just recently became a book reviewer. So uh, he's a book reviewer now. That's what he does. I'm actually not wearing any pants today. Ooh, ooh. Just say a big dip energy. <laughs>